today really, you know, I was going to have uh, Dennis Bernal talk about how to read uh, till next week. I need your suggestion. This is one of the morning calls. That it's just more like fam. I want you guys to ask questions. This is not going to be a long one. Um, I try to make Mondays, you know, like shorter and Friday shorter and then have the guest speakers. We're, we're building this out, you know. Um, I have for next week, I have Marvin, I mean, it's not Marvin. I have uh, Dennis Bernal, a state certified appraiser, going to teach us how to read an appraisal form, right? That's going to be a big one. He was going to do it today, but he was recruiting two agents in the Kendall office and he couldn't do an appraisal form. Um, what other suggestions, guys? Like, what, what do you guys feel, right? This is what I really wanted to do this call for, right? Um, just because sometimes, you know, there will be, we do surveys when the agents leave, right? And we'll say, hey, what was the reason why you left? You know, a lot of them, hey, we didn't have guidance. You know, I didn't know when we got in there and what to do from the next thing. Maybe, and, and, and I would say the defense to me, my self-defense of that was like, man, maybe you didn't show up to the office because I know if you go to the office, you're able to like ask people what to do. But I have to be prepared and do better. And we were so lucky to be able to bring Dana to the brokerage because she's creating our own program. It's called the SWAP program. That is going to be like, if you've ever worked with KW or like if you were with uh, like different, the Big Dark program, Bold or Net, we're going to have our very own. And it's going to be something that Dana's going to be doing here in Miami, May 18th, I believe. But she's going to do a month long training that the class, is, this is going to be replaced by Dana. One month of like two or three trainings a, a week. It's going to be crazy. And then we'll do more veteran experience training. Now, so I was long-winded. What would you guys like to be trained on? First, what what first what would you guys like next week's guests to train on so I could bring the right person? Any suggestions? I do actually. What's up, bro? So we talk about cold calling, prospecting, things like that, you know, trying to generate listings. However, what about the actual listing presentation? What should it look like? What it should, you know, how the execution should be. Done. Say less. You me, me, Rob and me, Carol City. Say less, fam. Like, you know, <laughs> I'll Rick Garcia. So there's different ways. So we're working, we're paying on software, guys. Uh, just so you know, to get excited, I have mentioned it to you guys called Maxa that they're designing. You'll probably be ready like in 30 to 60 days. They design it just for us. And it's going to have listing presentation, buyer presentation, seller presentations all the door hangers, all the marketing you're done, kind of like Canva, but like on rocket fuel. But we'll have Rick Garcia present how he presents with his listing, uh, with the way he does it. Rick's not a big listing presentation guy with a piece of paper. He's more of a does. I'll make sure Rick Garcia, if you guys don't know, has been Florida's top producer out of the last eight years, seven, like $25 million producer. So I'll make sure Rick Garcia does one, all right? So I'll, I'll set, you know what I'm going to do too? Because I, I, I like to spring it on people like, hey, tomorrow I need to do that. I'm going to try to set the calendar. I don't like to do the calendar because I want people to show up every day or be ready and be like, oh, I don't want to do that training, but I'll do this training. I'll do appraisals. Rick Garcia with listing presentation. What else, guys? I want you guys to let the, let the world know and let the agents know that this is a brokerage for the people, by the people. You know, so anything you guys suggest, uh, organization. I, Chelsea, that's a good one. Chelsea, what... If you could, you can unmute yourself. You're not outside the camera. What, like, in what type of organiza uh, organization? Right. Yes, like learning how to. Um, so when we prospect, but learning how to maintain the clients. Because what I'm having a problem with is that I will prospect and that I will maintain the clients, but now I'm into doing the contracts, dealing with the association. So I tend to lose track of still keeping that that ball rolling. And then after I'm done with those clients, now I'm like, okay, my pipeline is tied up. A CRM training. Yeah. Okay, so CRM and organization. I'm going to try to get LeBron back. Okay. LeBron back. All right, what else? Any other suggestions you guys want for next week? Hey, hey George, uh, yes, rev, shares are, rev shares are a really big thing okay. uh, for lifestyle. And there's so many reasons as to why to join. But if you guys can give us some quick tips on, you know, how to approach that. Oh, I love that one. All right. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to leave it at that. Training. All right. So appraisals, Rick Garcia on listing presentation, organization slash CRM. And then I'll do a rev share training. I'll do the rev share my, myself. Maybe I can have data help on that. Uh, the rev share is amazing, guys. I have, uh, I have agents really taking that serious and running with it. So that is going to be a good training, FYI. Yeah, all right. Yeah. George? Yes, Hi, sir. George. 
All right, what's up? Um, what about um, training in non-QM loans? That's, I guess, for, for the lenders, because I've been getting offers um, with non-QM, and I'm really not educated in that department. Um, can we get a little bit of training on that? 100%. I'll get you on that. I'll have Dana do the ref share. Uh, train. Uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'll bring some. Uh, a, 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 one of the people I know that is really good with non-QM, he's in like Miami Lakes. That That's his specialized. You know, we have PRNG Dayland that pretty does are more of the traditional side. They, uh, every low lender is going to tell you they, they do everything, right? But the quality, I got a guy that just does non-QM that I'm going to introduce. Uh, branding and marketing, for sure. Um, we'll do that. Branding and marketing. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So that's that. Um, suggestions for your branches. And again, you don't have to say what branch. Well, I, I'll know what branch for the most part. Suggestions what you want. Look, like next week, we're going to have in our Kendall branch. This is what I'm going to do next week as well. Just, the Orlando people got to see the unveiling of this training. I'm going to do it. That's my dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to do Hold on. Let me close my door. Training, my Orlando training. I'll do it especially for the morning call. And it's probably going to take us. The thing is that I'm going to do a morning call next week and I'll set it. That's going to take two hours. Who else was in Orlando that could give? Uh, who, who was in Orlando if you can unmute yourself? And, and I, don't, I don't need like, oh, it was awesome, but just tell me how many appointments you did. Um, who was in Orlando for that training? We got Dwayne from North Carolina. Oh, Rodrigo. Yo. How, what, on the first 10 minutes of that training, tell me what happened to you with, with you know, that training. Don't say what it was. Don't say what it was, but t t tell us. On the first 10 minutes? On the actual live prospecting? No, no, or? no. did the live prospecting. Well, just from that, like, you know, right away after doing, it took me six calls. You know, the first five they didn't pick out, left voicemail. And then the sixth one, it was a... Uh, uh, a client that had uh, the neighbor that wanted to sell by themselves. So they gave me like a listing appointment right away. Listing you know? appointment in the first 20, 10 minutes. We had people that got seven appointments they haven't talked to in a long time. It's just going to be a little bit, I'm going to do a mindset training, right? And then we're going to jump into that. And it's going to be one of these trainings. This is what, what I was envisioning to do on these calls, that it was a mindset training. And then everybody mutes themselves, starts making these calls. And then as you have questions, you can unmute yourself. And one thing is we keep each other accountable. Everybody has to have their camera on. And I'm going to do one of these things that like, maybe I make the morning call like nine, like it'll be a morning call training. Everybody has to have their cameras on. If you're not going to have your camera, I'm just kicking people. And I'm being a little bit more strict with these things. Like when I do this, like when I'm in that class, I'm like, what I told Orlando, it wasn't that many people in the first one, but there was a lot more in the second one. I was like, guys, if you're not coming to do the work, don't show up to this training. I'm, I'm going to hold you guys more accountable. You know, it might rub people the wrong way, but, you know, I'm only doing it for the best intention for you guys to be, like, crushing it. So I'm going to do that training. Dwayne, you're going to love this training, so it's going to be cold calling. So, Rob, we're going to do the cold calling. We're not going to do for sale by owners expired. We're going to do cold calling, and I'll do a training on that, but with mindset. I'll, I'll probably pick, like, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. I'm going to be here in Jersey office, so you're going to be seeing some the skyline of New York probably behind me. So it'll be pretty cool. So what else? Any more questions? This is one of these I'm, Q and A's that's only. Let's do one day. Go, go ahead. If we if we can do Wednesday, that'd be perfect. All right, Wednesday. Uh, I'm gonna aim for Wednesday, which should be fine. However, I'm going to the heat game on Tuesday in Madison Square Garden, hopefully, and um, it might not be Wednesday. I, I want to be perfect. It might be Tuesday. Why you can't do Tuesday, Rob? Uh, no, Tuesdays I'm not able to. All right, let me see what's up. Like no, no. But, uh, we we gotta have a conversation anyway. I like New York. All right. I'll talk later. <laughs> yeah. They have no real thing in it. All right. So Lake Nona, I reached out to my friend and family, Maria Polly on the train. They had no real thing. They gave me names of others. So they're also moving. So I got three family. And also when I do this call, I'm going to have like a board on it. So you're going to, and I'm going to write it behind me. It's going to be something here. I'm going to ship to Jersey right now. But um, what else guys? Suggestions for these morning calls. Um, I, we already got the training. So anything else that you guys need questions on Hey, I'm having issues with prospecting. We got a lot of veterans here that can answer some questions. I wanted Friday to be not a training, more so a Q&A. What, let me see. Let's go, let's go. Uh, all right, come on, I'm waiting. Mauricio. Okay. I 
don't like idle idle time. Ashley, what are you working on currently? Hey, George, George, I'm here. I just had my phone. And I muted you. Bye. Ashley, what's up? I'm, I'm following up with a couple um, people that I door knocked and made connections with. Um, it's just a lot of follow up in the in the door knocking. You know, you're what, building relationships. What what you being a I wouldn't say a rookie agent because you're crushing, you're closing. So being a, a growing agent that has closings and rentals under your belt, what pushed you to go do door knocking? So maybe you inspire others that aren't in your same time. Um, you're just you're kind of skipping that step of I, I tried cold calling before. Um, as you know, I was on Alexis's team and he He's diehard cold caller. Um, but I guess me being a woman with my soft little voice talking on the phones wasn't really getting people's attention. So I was like, let me just make the next step. And um, once I got my listing under contract in Lakes on the Green, I started farming that neighborhood. I door knocked everything with the under contract flyer. And my pitch was basically, um, we have various pre-approved buyers left on the table. Maybe you're interested in the value of your home or maybe you know someone selling or looking in the neighborhood <clears throat> a couple people off the rip are like yeah come on in like you know tell me what you think my house is worth and from there you just go building relationships you get their information you follow up I did um EDDMs which is mail outs to the whole neighborhood as well so then now I'm going to start they already saw me in person they already received a card in the mail from me and now I'm calling them all on the phone. So it's like, hey, remember me, Ashley? We spoke. I was in your neighborhood, whatever. So, yeah, it's just a farming game. Uh, how's your, how, how many days have you done it? How many doors have you knocked? What's your success so far? <clears throat> we're doing at least 40 doors a week. Um, and we're aiming for 10 connections. Like someone inviting you in, someone giving you their information. Um and um, we've had maybe, it's been not even two months yet. And we have like four hot prospects that are considering selling or considering moving or they need to downsize um, due to like, like this one lady is getting a knee replacement and she lives in a two story. So, I mean, it's, it's like all types of things really. Uh, all right, Ashley, thank you for sharing. Since I had a law and Marisa didn't answer his phone and Ashley <laughs> stepped it up. We're up. Let's go. Let's go. Dana, what will we talk? Can we get a training on door knocking? Um, and what you have when you prepare? Yeah, we can do a door knocking training. That's great. I think that's it. something straight everybody do. One of the things I always say was the biggest thing earlier on in my business. Remember, it was more on the investment side of things. One of the things I did early on, and like Rick Garcia will tell you, is how he gets his listing and sphere of influence and he pays for no leads. What you guys should do is make sure you make a note um, of all the business owners you know, or people that work, like if you have a friend that works at a car dealership. If you have a friend that owns a tire shop, if you have a friend that owns an accounting firm, show up and go to hang out, go bring coffee, go talk trash, go hang out there for that hour, go meet everybody in there. You know, don't be, oh, let me give you a business card. Just make some connections and be that go-to person. Go back every single week. Before you get to the office, go and go to a place of work and boom. You might say, hey, I don't know any business owners, but I'm going to go and in our building, let's just say Miami Lakes, I'm going there today. I would go in there and I'm going to go on the third floor and I'm going to introduce myself to three businesses. And I'm just going to be that go-to. It's a, a divorce thing and say, hey, an attorney, hey, listen, I'm going to send you a, a divorce. I know everybody here is a 50% chance of divorce. I know I'm going to run into somebody that needs a divorce. Let me get your information. And by the way, if you know of anybody looking for a house or anything or somebody who's getting divorced needs a realtor that's not a tax and they're not the husband or wife's friend, please use me. Oh, you hear some coffee. The next week you come back, oh, you hear some croquetas. I haven't found anybody divorced. I guess everybody's happy in Miami. You go to an accounting firm. Hey, I know it's tax season. Let me know what you have. Let me do. Let me know if you do bookkeeping. There's a 2,400 real estate agents in Lifestyle. I'm going to just give your info. Boom. And like, just build these relationships. And I have in the first day, it might not have in the second week, it might have in the third week, it might have in the fourth week. And then all of a sudden, month two, month three, month four, you're like, oh my God, I have so much business. You forget that you laid these seeds 90 to 120 days before. And all of a sudden, you're booming. The boom doesn't come. The next day, it comes over time. You got to lay the seeds, right? Got to have the faith of a mustard seed. You got to lay these seeds, water them, put the direct sunlight, nurture them, and boom, you have a, a fruitful garden. So, all right, let's see what else we got. All right, who else? Come on, give me some fire here. It's Friday. I want to get inspired. Who has some motivational stuff? Who's got in a nice listing? Let's go. Dagma, how's it been? Oh, I see, I see you, Nicole. What's up? Yeah, I saw you unmuting. 
Um, hi, good morning. I was actually wondering um, if we can get a training on Section 8 and ERAP and all that fun jazz. Wow. Just because you, you missed, you, 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 no, 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 listen. Sammy just did a Section 8 training yesterday. You oh, missed. snap. I'm going to, I actually, but I got you since you're one of our attendees. I'm actually going to be downloading all our, we had two great trainings. I'm going to upload them in before I leave today. So you'll see it on there. It's all on Section 8. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, got you. Let's do this. Um, what else? Who else? We got two of our Lake Nona uh, agents that just got uh, a contract for the first, the first contract ever. So that's something to Ooh, that we wow. get excited I, about. I need to have like props in here. I'm going to like get a bell. I got to make these calls even more uh, fun. So who, what, what, how they get the contracts, Rodrigo? What, how so, they source so Maria is there. For, she got her first listing, and then we got Lucas got uh, her first, uh, his first uh, buyer's contract. Okay, and then how do they get it? Just referral, circle of influence. Uh, that's a good question. We gotta ask Lisette. I just <laughs> that's my brand's manager over there. All right, I actually saw Lisette yesterday. Uh, that was awesome, but I saw her last minute. So I got, I bought this thing. Look what I'm buying, guys. Just so you can see, share screen. I bought this so I could hit it. Hopefully it's not that, that bad. So buy, buying that. Actually, let me buy two things so I can put it in Miami Lakes. So let me close this. All right. Put it in the stock. Boom. Buy that. Hey, Rodrigo, give us your last sale. How'd you get it? How you source it? Being that you've done over 45 deals in the last 12 months, give us some word of advice. If it was my last sale, I mean, me is always on the field. I'm always out. And um, I'm always... You know, I'm not a secret agent. You know, everybody knows who the dancing realtor is. So I just approach and I'm like, hey, just curious, were you or anybody in your family looking to buy or sell? You know, it's kind of like the training you did. It's the same way how I do it, but in person, you know, on my networking. All right. All right. Love it. Okay. Um, what was your last, what's like in the last five sales, seven sales? Which one was like, oh my God, I can't believe I got a sale that way. Give us a, a funny sale experience that you've had in your career or in the last year, uh, Rodrigo. Well, the easiest and uh, I'm just surprised sales that I'm getting is from just getting those uh, agents from Orlando giving me referrals just because they don't want to work the deal because they feel like they're, you know, they're either too busy or whatever. So I'm just like, and it's literally just put in a contract and get in an uh, offer accepted. And, Give us an example of that. Like, wait, I don't, I don't get it. So no, no, I just, I have a client, I have an agent here that, you know, I stay in contact. She's not part of lifestyle. I've been trying to recruit her, but she's, you know, with another compass. So, uh, I mean, I don't know where she's reached out to me. She gives me a buyer thinking that the buyer is, you know, wants to just, you know, waste her time. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take anything, you know, just, I'll take any referrals. So, she gave it to me. Uh, actually, they, this client went to an open house. They called me back. I said, hey, can we put an offer on this one? And after I got the referrals and I put the offer, the offer got accepted. And I didn't even show the house. So that was probably my, my easiest and quickest sell. And then we closed in, in, in 20 days because it, it was a cash deal. I do. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, anybody got an easy sale to share? Let me see who else in there. We just have to call people out in here. All right. Um, I'm, I'm having a hard sell. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, we'll hear you. Um, um, I, have yeah. A land, I have a land listed that I'm having a hard time to sell. Well, that's not a hard sale. So let me give you, uh, anytime it's hard sales, pricing, all right? Usually pricing or who you're marketing to. Go on the land, see who's bought land in that area. Reverse prospect, call everybody who's bought land, maybe cash deals, call. Sometimes you could go and make an assemblage. Like, let's just say you have that piece of land and there's something else next to it. Make it a sweeter deal. Talk to owners, see if you could package, you know, five lots and it may be more desirable. But more than likely, it's just a pricing issue um, when it's land and it hasn't pushed. Reverse processing, the matter is just like, I have a listing, but I'm going to call all the, the, the previous uh, listing agents that have sold the property or listed the property and say, hey, 
you have anybody, I know you I know you bought this piece of property, but would you be willing to buy another one in the area? Or you could go to all the sellers and say, hey, I got this piece of land, would you like to buy it? So you gotta dig deeper. That's not a hard sale, you're not there yet. So keep pushing, you got this. We, okay, we, thank you. you. I mean? There's so many other ways to go. Just don't think you're gonna list and it's just gonna show up. Unless it's priced well, you gotta do a little bit more extra work. So just, you know, after this, hit up all the owners, hit up all the sellers, go door knock the neighborhood and try to push it. Okay, okay, thank you. Hi, you're welcome. Uh, Mike, you had the most, all right, Mike, give us uh, some testimonials from our last two days. He actually did my training twice. Give us some testimonials of the last two days. All right, so I, um, I went digital and I sent personal messages to either past clients or uh, current investors that I'm trying to pick up off of Facebook. And so what I did was I sent them a video basically like, saying that like I am excited to catch up with them about the house and then also mentioning the contest that we were having and so I had a couple past clients reach out to me saying that they wanted to catch up grab a beer have me come over check out any update that's the, uh, updates that they made to the house and then um a couple people from Facebook we converted them we're gonna have a buyer's consult this weekend I have three buyer consults scheduled for uh both saturday and sunday so wait, let them know again from our two calls maybe two hour no maybe an hour and 30 minutes because we did it for 45 minutes how many appointments how many referrals did you get in those two hours i got six appointments and i'm looking at like two referrals right now uh one of them i wouldn't necessarily count as a referral it was more of like a partnership that was offered to me my past client he wants to invest in properties with me um, but he's also, he was like, Hey, if you can't get in on this one, you can just collect the commission. And then on the next one, we can get in on a property together, but he's really wanting to invest with me. So that's nice. I'm building a partnership there. And then also to circle back with the, uh, as far as the easiest sale, I had one recently where I helped out an investor get into an Airbnb turned around like two days later, he gave me his friend's number and we put him under contract that same day. Wow. I gotta say a funny story. I wish Irene would, was here, but well, I'll say that story when she gets on here in that call. But all right, let's see. Thanks, Mike, for sharing. Um, somebody has their hands up, but it just says iPhone. Who's that? I believe that might be me. What's going on, George? How you doing, family? What's this is Sir on, Ashley. Man? Oh, what's up, my bro? I'm doing all right. Um, easiest sale. Well, just this past week, just the power of social media. I had. Somebody actually had the sales rep for new construction call me and tell me, hey, I have some clients in here. They said they saw your video and um, they want you to represent them. They're about to go under contract. So I did absolutely nothing other than make a video three months ago about the community. And um, the sales rep from the new construction community, uh, again, the importance of just having relationships with them. And we're under contract and I've never personally met my clients. Not until I'm meeting them this weekend for the first time, but they're already under contract. That's the, that's the, hey, that's why that YouTube channel, man. I, I actually had, um, I was doing the training yesterday in our, in our, one of our Orlando offices and somebody's going to reach out to you. Somebody like an agent that's joining the brokerage, whether, hey, we got Sir Ashley. I think uh, somebody gave, Omi might have given your info. So I don't know if you did, maybe you didn't. Most people will say, hey, I want to meet that person or talk to that person. They don't take that easy step and just reaching out they get a little scared so hopefully he wasn't scared but it seems like he might have um let's see let's see let's see who else what's your question yanni I'm mute. um yeah i wanted to know also about airbnb because i have people from new york calling me that they they're looking for a property and you know they're looking more for investment and they also want to do airbnb so my question is like once i get get to that step and they come over here how do you apply for airbnb or how, how does that work airbnb is a software the only thing i would say like you know, being on the Airbnb, you got to be careful where you can or can't Airbnb. Um, and then also don't think it has to be in such a desirable area. Like if you're in Miami, where you're in Miami, oh, if it's not in South Beach or Brickell, that they're not going to Airbnb. There's people Airbnb in Homestead, Florida City, 
So there's really no no limit to it. Now, the only thing you got to be careful is like if they find it, usually for like partier areas, like like Brickle or Edgewater, but like regular homes, you could Airbnb. Another note you got to be careful if, you know, uh, if you apply for Homestead, it's something that they're all cracking down on in South Florida, that they try to like take away your Homestead exception if you're renting a room or whatnot. But just to find out Airbnb, look on Airbnb, right? And look at the neighborhood where you're looking to potentially get an Airbnb. If you see Airbnbs there, it's probably usually a good one. But we'll get a special person to, to teach on Airbnb. I got a few amazing Airbnb hosts that can kind of give you a guide. Actually, I have a, my own person that manages my Airbnb. He's in Venezuela. I'm going to have him. Uh, and he does the digital side of managing the Airbnb. I, I actually have a training. That's a good training. Rodman. His name is Rodman. I'm not gonna lie to you, and be careful too when it comes to when it comes to the condos with the HO when the um with the Airbnbs because sometimes like like the agents will be like, oh yeah, you can Airbnb in this area or in this building, but then you still have to go and get approved from the HOA, and then if the HOA really is not a, you know letting yeah, the, the Airbnbs go, you know that's that's one thing that you do have to go back and double check with the the, the condos because. I've been tricked a couple of times with that. Like, oh yeah, you can Airbnb here. And really the HOA does not allow it. And so you, you're going to go and purchase or get a building or get a condo. And then you won't even get approved with the HOA after. So yeah, that, or, you'll get, or you'll get fined from the building because this one building was charging $10,000 if they found out that you were Airbnb and in a building. And yeah, you don't want to get hit with that fine. For the most part, there's like maybe like 10 buildings in Brickell that allow Airbnb, maybe even less now. But if it's a building or a condo in a HOA, figure that most likely it's going to be a mission for you. So the single family homes are better. Town homes are a little bit better. But if it's in a condo building, figure it's, it's going to be a mission. So and, and then like they'll try to like block your fob access. So people come into your condo, they block the fob access so they can't go to the amenities. And it's just a mission. Some buildings allow it, but most buildings are removing it because what they'll tell you is like we'll manage your airbnb and rightfully so right you know a lot of times people are just coming in there randomly partying destroying like disturbing tenants in there when you have a single family home there's not a lot of disturbing of like neighbors for the most part but in a condo most of the time people are going to rent in south beach or in brick or in downtown because they want to go party and it's usually going to disturb tenants so that's why they try to control that a little bit better and if they do allow it, they want to manage the Airbnb and take 50% of the proceeds. So usually if you want an Airbnb, do not look for a condo for the most part, unless it's a friendly condo and it's very, it's a sell, very few and seldom that you'll see, at least in my experience. So guys, I'm going to leave it there. It's Friday, prospect, call people, send your text messages, send your WhatsApp. Have an amazing Friday. This is not the end of the week. This is the beginning of a great next week. So make sure you prospect today, prospect tomorrow, prospect Sunday. And let's rock and roll. Take care, guys, and have a beautiful Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Happy <laughs> Friday. Thank you. A lot of money. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this man was talking to me. I'm about to say, dude, what the hell? I can't go nowhere. Um, yeah, we should have got some drink. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We didn't bring no diaper bag for the fucking white mom. She probably wants something shit. You don't got no more for couples? Oh. You should get him a peek. That one don't count. That does. Let's get a shit out of the wild. Here, let me see. Is the tablet charged? Eight percent. Eight percent.